pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, fellow listening audience. Good evening to everyone here in the building. My name is Rance Williams, and I'll be standing for our president under the weather at the moment. I'm the secretary for the South Board of Education. I'm the Lewis Board Trustee. Betty Robinson, Trustee. Yolanda Smith, Trustee. Rachel Wax, Student Representative for South Alaska High School. Seneca Peter, South Hill High School, uh, Wanda Cook Robinson, Superintendent. Debbie Jones, Associate Superintendent for Administrative Services. David Turner, Associate Superintendent for Human Resources and Labor Relations. And taking notes for us tonight is Ms. Nicole Christian. She'll be keeping our minutes for tonight. And Ms. Paula Anderson will be assisting us for our, on our technical side of this presentation. Board member Daryl Buchanan, Fern Katz, and board member Michael Trust, Michael Poole has been excused from tonight's meeting. We will now have our student and staff recognition, outstanding achievement recognized by the board here tonight. We'd like to recognize Mr. Trayvon Johnson McGuire, a student from Southfield Regional Academic Campus, who was recently invited to the White House by the United States President, Barack Obama, in recognition of Trayvon's success with the news publication that he created. Trayvon started Upfront News in 2009, and in a matter of months, he amassed more than 1,000 subscribers. Upfront News currently has 13,000 fans. Trevon is here with his family and principal, Marty Bolger. Board, superintendent, all of the associates and staff and um, members of the community. This young man is remarkable. So I won't take a lot of time. I brought uh, Mrs. Starks, who's our assistant principal, and Mrs. Henry to speak on his behalf. Just a remarkable young man, and it's a very emotional piece for us because, as you can see, he did exactly what we always ask. What would you do if you weren't scared? So, Mrs. Starks, if you step up, please. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. This is Mr. Bolger just stated. One of our philosophy is, what would you do if you weren't scared? Trevion took that challenge. We are so very proud of Trevion. He is a great example of what you can do when you have passion, commitment, and just diligence. So we are so very, very, very proud of Trevion. And at this time, we'll have Mrs. Hensman, our counselor, to come before you. Good evening. I'd like to speak about my journey with Travion. I'm supposed to be the counselor, the one with knowledge and patience and understanding, but it was Travion who demonstrated all of that with me. For example, um, being my first year at um, Southwell Regional Academic Campus as a counselor, we started a new system of DocuPied, yada, yada, yada. Technology is only as good as the user and the rights you have to use it. That took a lot of time. Patience was what Travion had. How are you doing, Mrs. Henson? Were you able to get on yet? Sorry. <laughs> no, I can't. Okay, well, thank you very much for all that you've done for me. Again, we get into the common application. Mrs. Henson, were you able to get on? No, Travion. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. Each step of the way, he just showed so much patience. So now I was so excited to say, Travion, I got the, you know, DocuPies up and going, common app is there, the student profile, and we're all ready to go. And we start typing, and I said, what would you like me to say about you? He goes, I started a newspaper, and I have 13,000 subscribers. What? <laughs> you know, he's just very calm and very patient, and he's going to go far, and he deserves every recognition tonight. Thank you, Travion, for being my counselor. <laughs>
principal, Mr. Bolger, because that support system that I get at home continues when I go to school every day. And Mr. Bolger, he, he pushes me and my uh, classmates to go far and strive for greatness in all that we do. Um, Ms. Hensman has been great helping me prepare for my next adventure, which is college. And Mrs. Clark has been there. Anything I need, she's there, and I can talk to her. So thank you.
love and hat drive for um, people who need gloves and hats, uh, less fortunate people. Um, the Business Professionals of America also sponsored an Olga's fundraiser. The fundraiser um, ended this December.
South Hood Lake of High School and the University Academy High School for some help. In most cases, these were old friends of our club. The goal was simple. The club would provide all the elements for a sumptuous Thanksgiving feast for 20 needy families, and we asked that the schools in question would conduct canned food drives to provide the rest. Additionally, we tasked the schools with providing names of families to which the Lions would deliver the food. <coughs> the week before Thanksgiving, the canned goods were collected, the purchase of the pies, turkeys, and vegetables were made, and on Friday evening and Saturday mornings, uh, before the holiday, the distribution was made by members of the Lions Club. And I don't mind telling you, I think we got more out of making those deliveries than the people that received the canned goods and uh, other items did. <coughs> the collection of canned goods was so abundant that each family received four to five boxes full of foodstuffs. Additionally, because of the such a surplus, a generous contribution was made to the Pennington Center for Blind and Handicapped Children down in Taylor, Michigan. We estimate that we collected, or the students collected, between 2,500 and 3,000 cans of food. Our thanks go to all those who participated in the project. All I can say is, Mission accomplished. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'd also like to acknowledge the work of the magical group and the class act singing group at Southfield Lathrop. This Saturday I had an opportunity to attend the Lathrop Village Supper Club and the performance or the concert for the evening was done by those two groups and they were outstanding and I wanted the board to know that those students made us proud. They did an outstanding job and you know they didn't get any credit, they didn't get paid, they came on their own to sing and perform for our community. So I want to say a thank you to them. <coughs> also, <coughs> I wanted to let the board know that I've had an opportunity to go into several classrooms in the last week. I was in Ms. Bessie Burton's classroom where I had an opportunity to teach a real short unit on my trip to Saudi Arabia. And I think I got more out of it than the kids. Being back in the classroom, being able to teach, and having the students ask all of those questions um, was just very exciting. They had an opportunity to try on the wardrobe, to look at um, the books talking about import and export, to see the pictures about the Senate and how they um, do their laws and so on. And I want to thank Ms. Burden for inviting me, and I understand I have several more um, invitations coming. <laughs> but I want you to know when I went home that night, I told my husband that I had taught uh, a class that day and I still got it. I still got it. <laughs> At this time, I want to um, call Mr. Chap up to the podium. He's going to share with the board and the community an uh, update on our Saturday school. We came to you at the beginning of um, this fiscal year, and we were trying some things new. We were getting out of the box. We wanted to offer learning opportunities on Saturday, not only for credit recovery, but for enrichment, for advanced placement, to learn languages. Um, our radio group, and so on. So we thought we'd come back and let you know how that's working. Mr. Chap? Good evening to the members of the board, um, cabinet, and the community. Uh, I have already told the superintendent that I will be brief, and my voice is going, so I'm definitely going to be briefer than I, than I expected. Um, but again, I wanted to give the Board of Education just an overview of the gains we have made since the beginning of the semester with our Saturday School Program, and after my comments in the presentation, when I had Mr. Bulger come on up, who was the principal of the Saturday School Program, and again, just address the community. Uh, but I want to start off with just the concept. When we first started looking at everything from financial crisis in the state, um, <coughs> funds to local school districts, we realized that we had to get creative about how we deliver instruction and opportunities for our students. And so Saturday school as a concept is really about redefining the school day. 
Uh, it's no longer just about Monday through Friday, coming to school, leave, go home, and then forget about school. It's really about expanding academic opportunities and really about promoting a true unified academic community of learners. Our K-12 Saturday School program draws on students throughout the entire system. So it's not just, even though it's housed at Southfield High School, you have students from all the elementaries, all the K-8 schools and the high schools participating in this uh, at one level or another. But really, the whole idea was to provide instruction with a low student-to-teacher ratio so we maximize learning and student growth. We also grounded that in research-based instructional design because we know that the more instructional, the more quality instructional time on task that students have, we know that that equals higher achievement. But we also want to make sure that we stay within the board's strategic plan and vision and that we create a program that supports learning in an economically sustainable manner. And we couldn't have done that without uh, colleagues of mine with the Division of Instruction. I'm not sure if Rob Brown is here tonight. Also, uh, Linda Wood, our associate superintendent. But more important, most importantly, our parents. Uh, that enroll their children in these programs to make this viable so that we can continue. Um, so again, when we talk about how this fits into the board's strategic plan, the district's strategic plan, we look at our vision. This is providing support to the students, uh, again, being creative in the way that we deliver instruction. Um, we value parents as partners, again, as I've said. We could have not, we could have not put on this kind of program without the support of parents and the community. Uh, and then also making sure that we ensure fiscal <coughs> accountability and that we're able to continue many of the programs, including our radio station, via this platform. And then in addition to that, through our goals, we want to improve student achievement through innovative and effective instructional delivery, but also cultivate optimal, optimal, sorry, optimal learning experience in a positive environment. And Mr. Bulge is going to talk about that. So when we actually look at the program, there's really three tiers to it. We have a high school program, credit recovery, grade replacement, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, we have the other component, which is our K-8 academic supports, our math, reading, and writing and study skills labs, but also our K-8 academic enrichment programs. Uh, everything from dance, as the superintendent said, dance, school languages, um, academic games, and so on. And so when we break down the actual programs themselves, uh, one of the ones that's been most popular with the community are these, actual, these academic labs in which we've had students that are coming to work with teachers with high, high level of exp expertise and experience, uh, working with students at a very low student to teacher ratio environment and really being able to you know, extend that learning experience well, outside <coughs> the classroom during the normal school week. And at this time, I want to bring up Mr. Bolger, because he's going to tell us a little bit more about the reaction from the community. He is the principal of the Saturday School Program. He's on the ground every Saturday. Uh, and so I'm going to have him speak, and I believe he also had a teacher from the program as well. Thank you. Um, one of the things that I always like to talk about is teaching and learning. Um, really no need for a script with that. The reaction um, portion <coughs> of the project, um, which oftentimes goes to the wayside without conversation. It's sort of like you do it, it's over, then you move on to the next project. Um, our parents were extremely satisfied with the fact that we were able to offer students extended opportunities to learn. When you offer that, you increase the opportunities for students to be more academically sound. So as we, as we went into the process, putting together all the teachers who were involved, and I think we've got some of the teachers here, um, Dr. Campbell, um, Ms. Ms. Bolger. Will you just stand up, please? <laughs> yeah. Any other of the other teachers who are here for Saturday school? So give them a hand, please. Um, once we started extending these opportunities, then you had students coming up to you telling you, you know, I got an A on my math. You know, yeah, the ratio was small enough to the point to where you could have a teacher working one-on-one -on -one with the student, but yet the technology allowed the, the, student, the other students to be engaged uh, on the computer, and then the teacher could go and circulate to those processing. I think that's super powerful because research shows more time in academic settings, the greater the achievement academically. So that was one of the things that came from it. And then another piece that was important 
was the time spent engaged in positive um, activities. Our students oftentimes have a lot of things that they could be engaged in, some things that may not be as positive as we would like for them to do. But as we provide vehicles for our young people to be engaged, the parents tend to lean towards that because they want, they're not just rushing their students from one thing to the next, but they're trying to get their students prepared for the next level. Uh, and so having this opportunity for our students and our families is making our students more active and becoming more successful and becoming more engaged in positive things as opposed to something that could be negative. And the third that was a takeaway for us was that Saturday school has created an environment, a community <coughs> of learners. Instead of being schools in Southfield, we really felt like Southfield schools because we had teachers from Levy, from Southfield High. We had teachers from um, all over the district, Thompson, Vernon. We had contractors, folks who were retired, to come back and get involved in this program. And the numbers speak for themselves. So the parents are now looking for what's going to be coming second semester. And as you can see with the numbers that we had for this semester, um, and some of the offerings that we had, um, we had some pretty good involvement. Can we push to the, um, to the, this is for the credit recovery piece. And we had 74 students, they're coming on Saturday. Um, I was, I was, I'm so engaged that, as uh, Mr. Chap said, I thought I had class this coming Saturday. Someone had to tell me I did <laughs> because I just locked my mind in knowing that I worked on Saturday. But the importance of that says, and, and it's powerful, the importance of that says, um, Board, if I can tell you this, that folks are hungry for education opportunities. And our leadership, superintendent, uh, our associate superintendent, all of our associates and everybody involved in leadership, the division of instruction, Ms. <coughs> Brown, can you stand up? Mrs. Brown, Mr. Chap, all of them are moving. You can give her a hand, please. <laughs> moving us. They're moving us into being community, a community of learners who want opportunity. So those are some of the uh, points that I wanted to bring out. And I wanted to bring um, PhD candidate Dr. Campbell so he could speak for just a quick second. He was one of our contractors in the program and was responsible for coming up with some of the pictures. Just to speak for a brief second about his involvement in the program. Thank you. How's everyone today at the board, the captain, and the community? Um, I have this still a page out of uh, Dr. Robertson's book and say I probably had more fun over the past eight weeks with the kids. I actually did cartooning and video game development with the kids. And we took an actual different approach. I mean, everybody's heard about the social media and how kids are playing video games. Well, we took a slightly different approach, you know, and said, okay, let's have the kids make the video games and see what they're learning. And so we used a uh, free program called Scratch, which was made by MIT's creative Labs and it's Lego esque in that rather than having to do a whole lot of programming, they have Lego blocks and so then they can draw. And um, I'm very proud to say that one young lady that we had, she rocked it. She did everything from drawing to put together not just one, not just two, but three different animations. She did two cartoons and she did one uh, video game. And so that has been uh, very. Uh, rewarding, and I do thank the uh, board for providing the opportunity for such a program. Thank you. So, to the future, uh, I would definitely invite and actually encourage the members of the board or members of the community that are interested in learning more or just actually seeing what kind of great, wonderful experiences our students are having and what is truly, truly a community of learners. Um, or good, which, by the way, for the future. If you want to learn more about Saturday <coughs> School, uh, brochures will be, be available at all schools, K-12, and also for download on our website beginning January of 2012. Uh, our registration dates for the high school Saturday School program are January 30th and 31st, 2012, the Southfield Education Center, uh, FCC, uh, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., and then for K academic enrichment and support, will be February 28th and 29th, 2012, again, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Southfield Education Center. And if you want any 
need more information about these kinds of programs for our, our summer school programs, specialized programs. Uh, we actually have a new email that parents can contact. Uh, it's sbsprogram.southfield.k12.mi.us. Uh, the Division of Instruction is working to streamline this process so we can give more timely and even quicker response back to members of the community. Or you can still use the telephone number 248-746-4329. And with that said, if there's any questions from members of the board, I'd be more than happy to entertain them. I don't have a question, I just have a comment. I love that term, community of learners. Um, and I also like the fact that, you know, like Mr. Gorger said, it's not just a bunch of schools in Southfield. It felt like a Southfield school. Right. And so um, I just want to encourage anyone who can to just get involved with this Saturday school program. I know for many adults, we think, oh, Saturday's that day to rest and relax. Well, kids, you haven't earned it.
in our morning and our afternoon program, but we also offer at least minimally 30 additional literacy minutes, um, which would include journaling. We also incorporate our Champions Book Club for the children and much more. We also provide for our program enhancements, uh, a character development program that not only incorporates our Do Right crew, but we also facilitate the bucket filling concept, not only in the school district of Champions Extended Learning Programs, but also our preschool children. We're getting them ready for your school. Um, we also have, with our Do Right crew commitment, we have adopted um, some local families within the Champions Extended Learning Program. Every school has adopted a family from each local school and um, by the recommendation of each, each principal and we have adopted them where we're going to give them the basic needs that they need for this holiday season as well as food baskets, baskets for those families. And then we also, our Magnolia Preschool Program also adopted the Buffy Center children where we collected mittens and gloves and hats for those children in need. One of my favorite times this year is when we took over the Magnolia Preschool because I have a special heart for little ones too. So this year's accomplishment is, um, for this year is our, the tight timeline that we accomplished with the licensing and the transition from Berkeley School District to the Champions Program. Um, not only that, we, I oversaw the transitional process through that and we set a record for licensing that center in less than 30 days. Um, we also incorporate the early foundations curriculum for our preschool children, which I won't go too much into, but you do have that information in your packet that you'll receive. And we have implemented facility enhancements at Magnolia, which increase the positive impact in their learning environment. One of the things that we also are committed to is our teacher excellence. We have over 100 years at Magnolia Preschool of uh, educational professional experience, and we have invested recently over 48 hours of professional development, and we also offer not only them, but also our extended learning program teachers a competitive benefit package as well. Just to piggyback on what Katrina had mentioned about um, our teachers and really being the core of everything great about Champions, one of the additional investments that we're making this year is our teacher annual performance appraisal, which we refer to as our TAPA. And the TAPA was developed um, internally by our learning and development team and knowledge universe. And really with the, um, the three primary goals in mind being that we want to develop our area managers into instructional leaders and to empower our site directors um, to enhance their teaching skills, which ultimately will enhance the learning environment for not only for the children, but for the families. So this initiative has been rolled out and um, has, has been successful, and we're looking forward to continuing it throughout the year. As much as the TAPA focuses on the quality learning environment, um, the, um, our top 10 assessment actually really follows up on the back end, on the day-to-day, um, the, -day, the licensing requires, making sure that not only are we meeting those licensing requirements, but we're exceeding them. Um, it focuses on parent communication, staff interaction, evidence of curriculum, and um, really just a general partnership within each of the individual schools that we work with. And then also this year, we participated in a, um, a national superintendent survey with the uh, National After School Association to really um, assess the importance of after school programs. And we had an overwhelming response from superintendents across the country, not only superintendents that work with champions, but those that also work with other providers. So um, along those same lines, again, we're very <coughs> proud to provide that service to And then we also wanted to showcase some of really what makes Champions great, and that's all the little ones in our program. So Katrina's going to touch a little bit on some of those highlights. Um, if you see some of the children to our top right, 
we have a little one who's uh, getting some driver's education. He participates in our Mango Wave Preschool. Um, some of the do right crew information where the children at our Adler uh, program uh, incorporated our do right crew and doing the right thing for the community as well as their school and they made up their own rules and how they're going to incorporate that. And then uh, our Vandenberg and Adler fit as well uh, participating in curriculum, hands-on curriculum as well. And then we have some children at our Bernie Elementary when they receive their brand new equipment that you recently moved over there. They enjoyed that, so that was a great moment. And to the left, the bottom, the child um, was incorporating a take the challenge moment where he created a football for his favorite team, which is the Lions. And then we have uh, to the right, uh, our younger preschool participating this past summer in the Sun is Fun. And then just some uh, evidence of the program enhancements at the Magnolia as well that you'll be able to see in your packet. One of the other things that I'd like to incorporate as well and, and share with you is uh, for our top 10 assessments over the past year, our Champions Program, including the Magnolia Preschool, has maintained a 98% out of 100% in providing quality programming for your Southwood School. This is a very print-rich um, PowerPoint presentation, so we have included all of the information also in your packet that will be behind for you. And, thank you. and we want to say a special thank you to Champions. They have been an outstanding partner, working with us, um, always willing to problem solve, like when we had the boiler go out and burning, mm -hmm. and the kids were out all week, and you know, adjusting things for parents. When we called, they did not hesitate. They sat down and worked with us. And we are glad to have them, and we're looking forward to the future. And a great partnership. Thank you. No report to see. That concludes my report. I'd like to thank the superintendent and the cabinet, as well as champions as well, for the fine work that you're doing to continue to move this forward. We will now this for unfinished business. This is resolution of a matter for prior meeting. I'll ask our superintendent to give us a little update. This afternoon we met with our busy <coughs> uh, leadership and they're in the process of developing bylaws. They have developed them. It's just up for us now to approve. So with that, I'd like to give a little more background to what we've accomplished this afternoon. Well, I'd like to have all of our busy parents and our busy policy members, if they would just stand for a minute and be recognized. And we have a good representation in here. Mm -hmm. Ms. Hill, our director, is here. <laughs> Mr. Hill, thank you. You know, we're excited about what's happening over at the Bundle Center. And most recently, on November 30th, we had our, what's called our review with our hair controls in Chicago. And all of us were there to go over our grant, our finances, our procedures, and we came out with an outstanding report. In fact, it's the best report that we've gotten in years. We have reports in on time, our finances were clean and straight, our procedures were there, and everything is on track. The one thing they told us we had to hurry up with, though, was our bylaws. So, we have been working on the bylaws. A suggestion was for us to look to a preschool, or I'm sorry, a Head Start program that had been in existence and been successful, to look at their bylaws to make sure that they were aligned with the federal regulations. Then for those bylaws to go to the Policy Council and to the Board of Education for review. So that is exactly what we did. Then today, we had a meeting earlier where we had the chairperson and the vice chairperson of the policy council and a quorum of the Board of Education come together and to exchange ideas of their suggestions after the review. After the end of that meeting, we have a final document that both parties are comfortable with. So our board um, has that final document and I will be seeking approval from this board to adopt those bylaws this evening. Then this Friday, on December 16th, those bylaws will go to the Policy Council, and the Policy Council will have an opportunity to adopt them. The way that Head Start works, the Board of Education 
and the policy council has to work in concert, in a collaboration together. The Board of Education is the governing body, but we work collaboratively with the policy council. So that is the process, and that's what we are seeking to see. So with that, I ask for a motion to open and approve the bylaws and the code of conduct for the Southfield District Busing Head Start policy. Ask for a motion to approve the bylaws and the code of conduct for this budget staff. I move that we open and approve the code of conduct and bylaws for the Bussy Head Start program. It's been moved and properly seconded. I ask Trustee Robinson to call for the vote. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Thank you. I do have a couple of things. 
Um, first, Ms. Heichel, I'd like to go on record saying she's my elementary school librarian, so she's been around in this district helping us learn how to read and gather books and check the Dewey Decimal. I mean, prior to just logging on a computer, I'm talking about pulling out a file this long of Dewey Decimal. <laughs> I don't know if you remember those. Um, but yeah, definitely a shout out to Ms. Heichel. And then finally, over the since we last met as a board last month, a lot of things have been happening legislative-wise, and I guess I'll piggyback on Fern and her absence. She's our legislative watchdog for the board, if you will. Just to say, um, pay attention. Uh, pay attention to what happens in Lansing, what happens in Washington. A lot of it trickles down and affects us right here in our own in our own neighborhood. Um, there's talks of you know eliminating caps on charter schools, and I think a lot of the population at large could probably. Uh, do themselves some justice by just researching what charter schools are. And um, there was a, a case on the news just this past week about a young lady who had sexual um, uh, misconduct with a professional at her school. The school turned out to be a charter school. And when it came down to it, there was no board for them to get any action from, any response from. So a lot of times when we hear charter schools, we think they must be good. But in fact, we need to find out who is operating these charter schools, who's running them, why are they running them, what's their relation to education as a whole, and then realize that this board is elected, so we answer to you. When you're a corporate board, there is no answering to. So what happens just happens. So I just want you as a community, because Southfield, we, we are an involved community, um, to make sure that we're asking our legislators questions, um, contact them on a regular basis, and make sure that they hear from us. That's all I have. Um, I like to. I would be remiss if I <coughs> did not say thank you to Rihanna, guiding our audio person in the back, as well as Chuck Cappers, our technical audio team. Oh, I thank you very much for your assistance. Without you, <laughs> I'm over here. So see. You. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I also want to say there is no better place in Southfield. So with that, I'd like to say happy holidays to the families here in the building, those out in the community. Be safe. I'd like to see each and every one of you next year. Enjoy your families and friends. And take time to relax and enjoy yourself. Future meetings. January 3rd are our student hearings. January 10th is our next regular board meeting. January 24th. 